Let's go ahead and call us. No, nope, it's still not. Hello? Testing? One, two, three. <laughs> there they are. Yeah. Let's go ahead and start this meeting. Adoption of the agenda. I've already adopted it, so I'm good with it. Yeah, I'm good with it. That's uh, fine with me. Motion that we adopt the agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion so passes. Uh, oral communications. You can see the multitudes are out there. Yep. I also noticed that they shrunk it by half this, this, week, this week. Yeah, what happened? They're expecting a smaller than average crowd. It's still the holidays, last week before kids go back to school. We can understand why it's not full as it usually is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see, approval of the minutes. Look fine to me. Yep, we all approved it. Everybody had a chance, okay. I motion to approve the minutes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So passes. And then we're going to move on to a presentation. <coughs> You're up. Yes. Thank you, um, Open Space um, and Ecology Committee, for having me uh, here. I'd, I'd like to um, take a few minutes to uh, introduce the, uh, the city's first uh, pavement recycling project. Um, I've already talked to uh, the Complete Street Safety Committee about this project, but now I get the opportunity to introduce this to OSEC. Um, as you can see on the screens, I hope, um, the map of, uh, of the project area, um, we're planning on rehabilitating um, a long uh, section of Bayshore Boulevard um, between Old County and the South City um, limits, uh, north and southbound, and the medians included. Um, and you can see that there's a little uh, section of the southbound um, side in the southern um, part of the area that's been excluded. Um, that area has recently been overlaid or resurfaced, so it's um, most of the rest of the area that, that you might be aware is, uh, is, is pretty nasty with the crack ceiling and all the uh, miscolored concrete patches. So that's where uh, this project comes into play. Next slide. So normally uh, for a normal um, rehabilitation um, project, we would grind the existing pavement to a certain depth and throw the the old millings into, into trucks to be taken to a reprocessing plant, to be re reprocessed um, for other uses. And then the new asphalt concrete would be trucked into the job site. Um, so this, this diagram shows that for about one, one lane mile, which is uh, one lane a mile long, uh, at three inches depth, it would take about 45 truckloads to haul off the old material, and then 38 to haul in the, the new material to the site. And, uh, and, and of course, that contributes uh, a lot of greenhouse gas emissions, um, which <coughs> vary depending on how far the trucks have to go. Um, and once the new AC is, is, is brought to the job site, then it's, then it's thrown in a paving machine and, and put down, and then uh, possibly top, potentially topped with uh, um, a protective overlay uh, surfacing. But the beauty of the cold in place recycling method is that all of the, um, all of the existing material is reused and reprocessed in place. So um, what, what CIR um, involves is, is, a, is a paving train and uh, there's, there's a machine that mills the existing pavement Oh, sure, yeah. Sorry. Um, uh, a machine that, that mills the existing pavement and then uh, and, and sizes the material appropriately and then uh, mixes it with a special type of emulsion 
and then uh, is is put back uh, down onto the onto the roadway, um, followed by compaction and a um, protective overlay surfacing. So as you can see on the screen, uh, that's what the the paving train looks like. Um, generally, it it depends. Sometimes the, there's one machine that does it all, but in this drawing, there's there's a machine that that grinds the existing pavement, and there's a machine that sizes it um, appropriately, and and there's a pug mill machine that mixes it with emulsion, and then uh, either throws it into a paving machine or, or leaves it on the ground for for the paving machine to to pick up. Um, so can you go back a slide? So uh, with the CIR, pro CIR process, you can see that there's a significant decrease in, uh, in, in the amount of truck traffic that, that would be present. Um, for one lane mile, there would only be about two truckloads to bring in the emulsion. Next slide. So um, you can see how complex and, and how large the, uh, the, the paving train is. It's about 140 feet long. And um, because it's so big, that's, that's the reason we don't use uh, cold in place recycling for every paving project. Um, because this, this method wouldn't be ideal for, you know, the central Brisbane or the smaller streets up at the ridge because um, it takes a lot of effort to set up the paving train and to take it apart and to transport it from site to site. Um, so because of the, uh, the extra cost, and, and burden that is involved in, uh, in in moving the paving train 140 feet from site to site, um, that cost uh, would not be justified <coughs> if if we used it for for every project. But this this method is ideal for long straight stretches of road. So Bayshore Boulevard is is a good application of it. So this is what the, the paving train looks like. Uh, you, you're looking at it from the back. So in the front there is a tanker that holds uh, the, the special emulsion, the liquidy, uh, gooey stuff that, that holds the, uh, the aggregate, which is the, the rocks, the millings together, um, followed by, the, uh, by a machine, that, followed by machine that's, uh, that's milling the existing pavement and sizing it and, and mixing it with uh, with the emulsion, and then that, mix that mixture is being thrown into the paving machine at the back there, which is, uh, which is placing it back onto the roadway. So uh, I'd like to show you a video that, that I found. I think, th I think it was made by the uh, MTC um, so that you can see this uh, process actively. The MTC stands for Metropolitan Transportation Commission. Thank you. 
And the third trailer, what they call the emulsion unit, weighs another 60,000 pounds. The train is 144 feet long. The NTC and the Federal Highway Administration brought 50 Bay Area industry leaders here to watch in hopes of changing the Northern California paving industry with this cold in place recycling train. It is a train. The front portion of the train is a thousand horsepower, 12 and a half foot wide milling machine that tows the recycling plant and the emulsion tanker. So that's the word train. It, it only likes to go forward. It does not back up very well. And as you can see by this shot, it loves going straight. Uh, on a good day, a normal day, we can do two, two and a half miles a day at about three inches deep. Then a, a standard paving equipment follows behind and then the compaction follows closely behind the paving equipment. Cut the time in half and there's no truck congestion and no truck traffic. Plus the reduction in public inconvenience by, by reducing construction shifts, you actually relieve the public of inconvenience and liability. And by eliminating the trucking, you eliminate truck congestion, fuel, emissions, greenhouse gases. This project here alone in Napa will save about a million pounds of CO2 uh, just in this project alone. So as you can imagine, where there's 40,000 miles of roadway through all the Bay Area, that's an awful lot of CO2 savings for uh, our greenhouse reductions. And as we know, uh, our goal at MTC is to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions Bay Area-wide by 15%. This tanker in the middle of the train convoy shoots a highly engineered glue into the reprocessed asphalt to make it flexible so it will last much longer than the streets you drive on today. Kevin Donnelly is with Western Emulsions Pavement Preservation. And that engineered emulsion, what's, what's special about it is that it has a small amount of rejuvenator in it. Now the rejuvenator has the ability to soften the old asphalt that's being ground up. We activate it so that when we put it back down, you've got a nice new binder. And it also has some polymers in it to help toughen it up and make it really resistant to traffic quickly. So they call it cold in place recycling because there's no heat used in this process. We're not heating up the pavement in order to extract it. We're grinding it out and adding an emulsion in the closed system and putting it right back down. The emulsion is about 100 degrees, maybe up to 120 degrees. In, our, in this industry, that's considered cold. When you look at the fact that when they place hot asphalt, you're talking 300 plus degrees. The cold in place recycling train has just finished <coughs> two stops in the north. Yeah, just to clarify, um, the project they're talking about is is in Napa. It's about um, it's it's five and a half miles long, and it's about two lane miles. Um, and so, when Bill Dodd uh, in the video mentioned uh, a million tons of a, mil a million pounds of of CO two uh, prevented from being released, that's about four hundred fifty metric tons. Um, our project area is about a third of, of, of that area, of that project, so you can kind of get an approximate um, feeling of, of how much uh, we're, we're preventing um, being released. Um, so that's, uh, that's all I have for my presentation, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. That's very interesting. Um, do you know, have they done any experiments to see whether this can be done over and over with this new tech, you know, new resurfacing technique. Can they, I mean, in 10 years when this asphalt wears, wears out or five years, whenever it does, can they do the same process to it? Do you know? This, well, this method is, it's because we're rehabilitating, um, we're, we're, you know, replacing three inches of, of the existing surface. It, it should last, and we're putting an overlay surface on it too, so it should last it should last more than 10 years, but yeah, if, um, I guess if, we're ever, if we ever have to rehabilitate in the far off future, I guess, uh, I don't see why not. Yeah, I don't see why, way. right. Yeah, yeah. Although it's pretty new. It's, it's a new uh, method, yeah. It's, uh, and it's the reason why this method hasn't been used uh, for, you know, for, for a long time is that it's, you know, it, it's had to take time to be proven, so. It's, it's still relatively new, but yeah, I, I don't see why not. Cool. So a couple of other questions that I have. That, is, that was very interesting. That's great. I mean, that's amazing. Um, I'm sure the cost involved, but 
when are we looking at doing this one? And if we did do this and we were going to be transporting, why wouldn't we transport just to other areas and try to get it all done at once into that same asphalt? You know, the other areas you were saying that we wouldn't want to do at that time because you wouldn't be able to put it from here to here. You wouldn't want to move the machine, but we could still take other asphalt that we needed to that, correct? So, so you're asking if, if we take the 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 pavement that we grind up and yeah. we just move that to yeah. the smaller streets. Instead of having to transport, you were just saying, you know, if there was other pavement that needed to be taken care of, that we would take that all in this consideration, do it at the same time. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. I think what she's trying to say is, is there a way to break the chain apart so you could use individual pieces in smaller areas? No. The, no. It was too, the, the cost of moving it was too much, so you were saying there might be other areas in Brisbane that need to have, you wouldn't want to use this in every single area. But if you're using it down the Bay Shore, why wouldn't you, if there was other needs in Brisbane that we would take it to that location? Oh, that you're close by? It, you know, we're not, I think, super excited to try to do this on the residential streets, but when you have a 140 foot, yeah. there are a couple different companies that do it and their trains are a little bit different, their lengths may be a little bit different. There aren't a ton of companies out there doing it in Northern California right now, but if it's 140 feet and you're going to do Mariposa between Visitation and San Bruno, yeah, you're not number gonna one, nobody's going to be able to get in and out of their house yeah. while that thing's in front of it. And it barely gets going and it's done okay. on the street. So it just doesn't feel like it would work in a residential area and, here. And is this something that we're looking to do here in the near future? Yeah, we're, we want to take it to council on September 1st and do it before it starts raining, like early October. Wow. Oh, are there any other large? Are there, I s don't suppose there's any other large projects in Brisbane? You oh. know, there might be a couple other places, not anything that's kind of a continuous run like that. And we're kind of, we're using all our budget that we have for rehabilitating pavement. Okay. On this okay. project, and it is kind of the worst that we have. But if it's successful, we'd we'd consider doing it other places. I'm just curious about if if it used to be responsible if repaving used to be responsible for that many emissions. Were those emissions counted in our greenhouse gas inventory in the past? Yeah. Well, we talked a little bit about that. Like, <laughs> what? Uh, That's a lot of emissions. Yeah. Uh, if we uh, if we would get the savings and we haven't that was a question that we wondered might be asked and we use you know CCAG calculates our emissions for us or does our inventory so we'd have to ask them what that savings would be but I don't know if it is okay yeah it just never occurred to me to think well I didn't realize that paving roads was responsible for so many greenhouse gases yeah so I was just wondering you know where do those usually get counted yeah so their number, you know, they started with pounds, so we converted it to metric tons. And I don't, in Brisbane, you're not going to have to truck, um, you're not going to haul off asphalt as far as you might have in Napa County somewhere that's a little more rural. So that might have been why their number was higher. But we do have a count for the number of trips that either start or end. And I think that's modeled. So that would probably be where okay. like a yeah. truck traffic would be counted. Mm -hmm. Just curious. Yeah. Thank you. So I had one question, and um, that was about the rejuvenator or the goo. The goo. Um, how safe is this? What is it? Well, it's the same thing. That's that's. It's similar to what's used in hot mix asphalt. Okay, so it's safe to use then. Yeah, don't eat. Relatively. It. Don't safe eat to it, use. maybe, but. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't lay on it. It's as safe as hot asphalt. Asphalt, though. So. Yeah. You don't want to sleep on the asphalt, you're saying? <laughs> Probably not. Try not to. Um, I had a couple of questions on one of your slides, uh, Mr. Ren, that it says AC. What does AC refer to? That stands for asphalt concrete. Okay. And um, I also was curious, like more specifically, what is in, uh, now, I'm, this sounds like a great idea. Don't get me wrong. Totally down with it. Um, but when I start hearing words like rejuvenators <laughs> thrown around in in something that should be utilitarian like asphalt, I'm like, okay, what what is this buzzword taking the place of? So I, I was also curious kind of what is in the emulsion and what is in the protective overlay because it, obviously it's not exactly the same thing they use in hot mix. Um, 
And I, I understand it's probably mostly similar. And who knows? We may be, maybe we should be objecting to what's in hot mix asphalt. Yeah, I was just going <laughs> to yeah. it'd be better. So, yeah, maybe it's on a list somewhere, probably. Yeah. But the protective overlay is the same as it, it is an AC overlay. So okay. when you've cold mixed this aggregate that's uh, recycled asphalt with the emulsion, you're doing something different than hot mix, so it's different than the asphalt emulsion that's used in a hot mix. It's just a, when you see a normal overlay. But that, mm -hmm. it doesn't bind enough to just leave it alone. You've got to put an overlay over the top. And Bayshore is a, is a perfect candidate because the existing pavement is in such bad condition that we couldn't just repair a few potholes and then do an overlay mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. past. What we're going to do now is it's going to last. Like That's awesome. I really that's like great. That. Good job. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I can't give you a technical answer on the rejuvenator, but we could look something up and we could email it to you. Yeah. Um, and then I was just curious if anybody's done um, like a cost curve, like w how many feet of road do you have to do before this becomes an effective or a cost preferred method? Um, we looked at what it cost versus um, doing an overlay and just digging out the worst areas, which isn't a similar product. And we've talked to their the contractors in the industry and the people that are trying to promote it and get more people to use it. Mm -hmm. And they have given us their analysis of what length would make sense. If we were doing half as much of a project that wouldn't, um, the economy of scale wouldn't make it. Yeah, yeah. Cancel out. Yeah, so what, what kind of length did they come out with? I'm just curious, was it? Well, I don't know if they gave us a number, but they said yeah. this, where we're doing um, a mile in four lanes is a suitable project. We looked at, um, I've looked at a project, well, this contractor has done the one in Napa. There's been yeah. one, um, we went out and observed one on Sir Francis Drake in, I'm not sure if that's in the county or in a, a city up there by um, past Fairfax and Woodacre. And we looked at one in Santa Clara. So they've definitely, as these projects <laughs> have gotten going, brought local agencies out to <coughs> see what kind of what kind of applications it's suited to. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Um, I was just wondering if you guys had a number because then in the future you could discriminate and say, okay, well this project's going to be too small and this project's might be big enough and might be worth going and getting a bid for. Yeah, so it's qualitative at this point. Okay. All right, that was all my questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Excellent. So we're going to go ahead and move on to chair and community matters. I would mm -hmm. like to publicly state that I am a ninny butt. <laughs> because I had the toolkit all ready and to go <laughs> in my living room and left it there. I should have driven you home to go pick it up. Maybe I should have let you driven me home and go pick it up. <laughs> Because there it is. Mm, it's not done. Um, I printed out everything recently because I got tired of staring at the screen because it seems like no matter how many times I look at the screen, I find five new mistakes every time I look at it. Um, I was going to go over it one more time then, and I think I'll take those back, those corrections back to the document and email it out to everybody that way. Okay. I, I know I've been going to send it to you guys for a while, but it seems like Every time I'm about to hit the send button, I think of something else. I'm up to about 30 pages now, so. Oh my. I, I just can't. I need, somebody needs to rip it out of my hands pretty soon. Should we set a deadline? Yeah, maybe. Next um, I hope Natalie is going to do some shopping one of these days. Get some stuff. Got a list? Yeah. Uh, Maybe we can discuss that under CAP subcommittee. Sure. And uh, talk about all the updates there. Sure, we can do that. That's fine. Um, I brought the stuff that Hero sent me, if anybody wanted to look at that. I forgot that last time. And I think that that's all I have right now. Oh, um, maybe this is a good place to say is, where are we with the invasive species articles? Because I think it's been a while since one went out. And I kind of thought you took that over for me because I'm I, doing I too did much. take that over. I sent 
um, the staff that <coughs> coordinates the STAR and the articles that go into there. I sent her to two at the okay. same time. Um, and so at her leisure, she will put them in when at there's room. Le not at her leisure, as, as space allows. As space allows. Yeah, you OK. For, yeah, All right, remember. might be a good time. I, I, how long, does anybody remember how many months it's been? It seems like it's been ages, but maybe I'm just losing track of time. They, they didn't months. know that we want the articles in. They didn't have room for the next yeah. one, so it's not going to be in September. But yeah. Okay, well, maybe yeah. before the next one comes up, we'll send a reminder and be like, hey, it's been three issues or six months or whatever at that point, and just keep it moving along. That sounds good. Anything else? Nope. Well, aren't, aren't we going to uh, talk separately about the Climate Action Plan subcommittee, or is that, that where this goes? Uh, that's under item 7B. That's what I thought. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I have a couple things under that. Well, let's get on with the review of the City Council response to UCP letter on the Bay Lines. <sighs> well, I ended up writing this <laughs> very quickly. Um, after Natalie prompted me that Barbara and I had agreed to write it, and Barbara, I think, was out of town. Yeah, <laughs> Natalie's and message caught me out of town, so. I went, oh, no. So I wrote something, um, very much a draft. Here it is, and I've, I've already seen a couple of typos, but I would like to know if the rest of the committee feels that I covered the things that that we agreed at the last meeting should be included in this. This is basically, it, partly it's a response to Jonathan Sharfman's, shall we say, critique of the OSEC position statement on land use that we sent to the Planning Commission. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I did, you don't have that handy by any chance, do you? I have a paper copy. I have my paper copy, but it'd be helpful maybe if we could see it and cut cross reference. <laughs> yeah, because I thought you hit all the points pretty well. I think I did, but um, I kind of like to be sure. Yeah, no, can't hurt to. So. Um, Going back to UPC's letter, I kind of felt like a lot of um, whoever wrote this for Mr. Sharfman or Mr. Sharfman himself didn't really, a lot of it doesn't, it's just spurious. I don't really find much uh, value in it. Matter of fact, uh, Mr. Sharfman even kind of sticks his foot in it when he basically says they're not willing to sor source materials locally because it would be too expensive. And I'm like, well, you know, there you go. Um, I did kind of regret my wording regarding the wetlands, so we could discuss that specifically okay. or not, depending. All right. Yes, you're right. That was something that is not in here, and we should maybe address it. The sense I got from the committee last time was that we didn't need to answer every single point, but I do think we Absolutely. need to answer that one. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. You know, this was just a starting place. It but was great. Glad you remember the wetlands because that is something I think we need to say. And then um, the other point uh, that I thought of Mr. Sharfman's was somewhat, somewhat valid is I want to go through and read it again and make sure we did not, in our language, conflate the high speed rail maintenance yard with the transit hub. And because his, well, his statement here says we did, but I wanted to go through and make sure we didn't. And I can't remember the wording specifically enough. All right, so that's our original letter then. Yeah, that, that would be going back to our original letter. Okay. Um, the only other thing I wanted to say about your wonderful, wonderful letter, Glenn, is that um, while I personally agree with the your comment about the tripling of pop population of the city of Brisbane, and that's concerning to me as a citizen. I felt that as open space and ecology, um, maybe the letter should avoid some negative things and 
emphasize the positives of building elsewhere. It's just a thought. Or okay. Differently. Maybe we could say the past uses of the site and the importance of not tripling wetlands. You know, maybe yeah. that's where we could put the wetlands. We we could say the the importance of the area as uh, the importance of preserving open space. Sure. To allow expansion of wetlands and um, to try to retain as much habitat as possible for species. We could say something like that instead, yeah. and you know, and leave out the the whole population thing altogether. Yeah. That, that, I think we can, we can fuss about that more, but that was just kind of a directional thing that I thought would be. Well, is that acceptable? Yeah, committee? yeah, that's a good direction. Do you, do you guys want to make these changes or, sh you know, do I need to make them? <laughs> <laughs> I could also um, respond at some it's point. Especially basically, we're talking about changing a sentence to kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, that wouldn't be too hard but I didn't follow exactly what it was. I thought you were going to add a paragraph, so. Okay. Thanks, Natalie. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to see a specific section? Could you scroll down a bit, please? I'm sort of repeating what we already said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to go further. What about everybody else? Okay. Sure. Okay, could back up just a little bit, please. Mm -hmm. It seems like we separated them. Okay. I don't know. What's the conflation you are worried about? High speed rail hub maybe is the yeah, maybe, because that was the quote he pulled out. He just said he pulled out the high-speed rail without mentioning and repair site for local rail. So he was trying to make <laughs> trying to make it look like we conflated things and confused our, our, our issues, and I just wanted to make sure that um, we had not, through choice of words, appeared to do that. And I agree with you, Glenn, that we didn't really appear to do that. I don't think we, we communicated that incorrectly. I thought you clarified it. You clarified it well in this follow-up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's a non-issue. I think it's just the well, He didn't want us to mention high-speed rail at all, so yeah. that's the first paragraph that we weren't just talking about the development plan. So, so um, going back to, to the current letter, are we ready to do it? Sure. So taking the first sentence of the third paragraph, we would strike the remainder of the sentence after the past uses of the site. You see it? I'm reluctant to put in a sensitive population. Oops. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Go down to the third paragraph. Third paragraph. Past use of site. 
Remove the remainder of that sentence? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then substitute, go back to the, to the past uses of the site again, comma, and the desirability of preserving open space for wetlands. As well. And or? For wetlands. For. And you could put parentheses a, a climate adaptation. Yeah, climate adaptation zone. Be good. Where are you now? Right where the cursor is, just, just back it up, take out the, the period, put parentheses. Parentheses. Close parentheses. And wildlife habitat. Does that work? Yeah, I think so. I like the fourth paragraph. That's good. Mm -hmm. Good. I think that'll do it. Sorry, had I started this earlier, I could have written a better letter. But no. Well, I think we still have time, don't we? Well, I don't. Okay. So. Well, and you also don't have other meetings, so yeah. Okay. I don't need to prove it in a meeting. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I, I don't have any more time right now. Yeah, neither do I. I think you hit every point that we needed to hit. Michael? Your name's on it, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm good with it. Okay. I guess we're done. Be sure to hit yeah. save. <laughs> Michael, would you like to come in another day, or do you want to wait after the meeting to sign the letter? Oh, I can sign it anytime you'd like. Any okay, so we'll just we'll just do it another day, not tonight, so I can yeah, you, you change the date and reread it. It's fine with me. Are, are we ready for the next topic? Yes, yeah, yeah. we are. Mm -hmm. What is that picture? Bicycle, something. It's a battery the charger. Charge, a battery charger? Mm -hmm. Oh, how cool. Um, so Karen and I talked about bikes that have these contraptions attached that uh, can be used to charge uh, smartphones, um, tablets, um, you know, other electronics. And so we thought it might be a possibility to have at our booth this year at Dana Park. Um, there's still some research that should be done on it um, because the price range varies widely from, you know, 20 or so dollars to $130. So I just don't know what the difference is. And By how long it can charge or something. 
where yeah. it's made. <laughs> right, and, and how compatible it is with different yeah. types of devices. Mm -hmm. um, so day in the, the Day in the Park subcommittee is uh, Megan and Kima. Mm -hmm. So um, it's coming up September 24th. Wow, here's really here's a list of activities we went over in the past, and so uh, maybe we could have a meeting to start to develop some of these materials. Okay, I did talk to Akeem and I got together oh, okay, before great. he left. I thought he was going to be back, and before I left, so um, we went through all this. We were wondering what was the budget for the garbage cans and the pictures, the shadow boxes, or whatever we were going to try to make that. Do we have some sort of a budget? Do we have some area in town somewhere volunteer people that would build those for us i mean how could we make that happen there's osec has budget for special projects so i don't know that it's broken out today in the park we've spent what did you say? spent was almost 200 last year yeah okay so um Hmm. Maybe, maybe we can talk about it more okay. and then determine how much, you know, where we want to spend that money as far All as right. these materials go. That sounds good. Um, what was our budget answer for our people? Toolkit, we've got that. Do you have a question, Glenn? Yeah, I had a couple, actually. Is there, um, so it looks like we're going to distribute information about the, uh, oh, my mind is blanking. <laughs> Peninsula Clean Energy, the, the Community Choice Program, and Peninsula Sun Shares. Is there any information available on um, property assessed clean energy? You know, those. On PACE? Yeah. Uh, should, we, should we pass that out too? I can. mean, as long as we're sure. passing stuff out. That's an excellent and idea, by the way. I mean, I wasn't able to get the financing in order for my house to do the solar panels, mm -hmm. but I had no idea about PACE. Oh. And now I do, and I'm starting to put, move in that direction. So Good. Oh, cool. How, where did you find out about it? What did you? Uh, I, was, I was talking to SkyTech, I think, is the installer for Peninsula SunShares. Oh, okay, and, uh, so so they'll tell you when you. Yeah, and I, so I finally, I've asked like five or six different representatives from the company, and finally this one guy said, this is who you talk to, and he gave me a long list. Okay. So, so, so do we have information that makes it clear who people should talk to about PACE financing? Do we know? Is San Mateo Energy Upgrade putting out stuff about it, or? Well, I think um, each agency is deciding which ones to adopt individually and we've adopted hero and another one and we're i think it's on going to be on the council's agenda to adopt to adopt an open pace that's like another five companies um we definitely have their information at day in the park i've seen i've heard um ads on the radio for hero lately it seems like they're okay being just if there's something being. clear to hand out to people um, yeah, and I, I think we should also have it at the n next round of the Peninsula Sun Shares if it's not absolutely being linked together. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the the second thing I had was we've always had a, a board with you know invasive species mm -hmm. on it. I, we probably still have the boards, or maybe it's time to buy some new boards. We got new boards last year. You went oh, there. Did we it? did okay. it. We redid the boards last year. I'm just wondering. This is probably a dumb question, but but. If we're going to talk about invasive species and alternatives, um, couldn't the wouldn't it be worth it to talk to Mountain Watch and see if they'd sell some plants? I mean, can we do that? Well, we're going to be right next to Mountain Watch, so we can always well, they have them plants sell plants. plants. There, no, but that's a great idea. I don't think they've ever sold plants before. Maybe they could at least bring the suggested alternatives. Uh, yeah, some of them. Yeah. Yeah, Michelle, uh, Michelle's not here. Michelle <laughs> staffs that booth normally, so. Mm -hmm. You can just send an email to her. I think it was quite a long time ago, maybe five years or so. I seem to remember that somebody was selling plants at the at the community festival, and it was nice. I think they sold quite a few. But if you know, if they would bring some and sell them, it would be nice to say, "Don't plant this. See how beautiful this is." I, I kind of like that idea because we always bring like what not to do, so here we get to bring what to do. Yeah. 
you know, show them what works instead of what always doesn't. So, so maybe yeah. talk to Mountain Watch like and see if they could. Plus, do nice, that. fresh, clean, pretty plants are better. A bunch of dead things that are stuck on those things. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, I mean they'll yeah. they'll look very unappealing, <laughs> <laughs> half dead and stuck to the board. They won't stand a chance compared to some nice, beautiful potted plants from San Bruno Mountain Watch. Okay, so we'll I'll talk to we'll talk to Michelle about that. I, I'll yeah. send that out to her so we can have that added. Are you guys going to um, collect new samples of the invasive plant? species? I think we'll just go the opposite route this time. Nobody really looks at them. <laughs> we did it all last year. Really, they were like, that's nice. Show us something. Pretty plants, that'll sell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's, we, we decided anyway at another <laughs> meeting that we weren't going to go down that route, that we have so many other things here to share. Mm -hmm. You know, it's too hard. The wind comes in. You have these boards coming up. It's just, it's not conducive. You know, another idea for that might be to take some pictures of the mountain where invasives are really a problem. That's you know, instead idea. of showing the plant Yeah, itself. actually take a picture. Look at what this mountain looks like, and these are the, the butterflies or whatnot that if we don't keep this. Yeah. Unfortunately. I'm bringing people to Restoration Day, too. I mean, really promoting Restoration Day. Unfortunately, it's not a good time of year to do that, but you could probably get a couple photographs of the baylands covered with pampas grass and... Um, there's fennel infestations all over the place. Isn't there always scotch broom? <laughs> always. There's yeah, always it's scotch hard to broom. identify when it's not blooming. Yeah, you're right. But you can get pictures up of French broom on the internet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I did before. I had little pictures up next to the ones that I, it just made more sense. It was easier. But maybe a little picture book for people to go through instead of. Yeah, we have our invasive species flyer um, yeah. that yeah. contains, I think, the top that's fine. Eight or seven. That's Eight. fine. We just keep that flyer out there. That's already, the pictures are there. But I do like the idea, so I'll talk to Michelle about, um, I'll follow up with Michelle about that. Okay. She's in Mongolia and out of um, range for the next, I think, two days, three days. Mongolia? Yes. How exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she won't be around for three days. I mean, she's like without cell service. She just, she sent it through Facebook today. <laughs> Yeah, she's had a pretty interesting trip so far. Anyway, so I'll talk to her. Um, so item number two, it's not education on what's compostable so much as what's recyclable. Because we're not going to, like, actually... It's total recycling, yeah. Yeah, because we're not going to, It's the whole picture. It's not just education on, yeah. Yeah, because we're not going to, like, tack moldy pickles up to the shadow box board. <laughs> no. But we'll put chicken bones. Why not? We might have a picture of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't attract any some of the things it's that necessary flies. Like the waxed them, cardboard and the pardon. Yeah, I was just saying it's the things that the that people get confused over, like the uh, the paper milk container. That's what we're gonna have. Container. Yeah, I mean, even when I do it, I sit there and I know if I take yeah. My own house. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're gonna have up. We'd also discussed having um, some student minders to help people out when they're like just, you know, trying to throw things over their shoulder at the cans. Is that still an idea? I think that's a good idea. I think it's a really good idea, but so it's... What's Byron I'd doing that day? Yeah, what's Byron and his buddies doing? I can make him go for like an hour or so. Make? He'll want to. <laughs> he can get his friends, they'll each take... You know. he, he's he's far too mu much of a teenager to want to do <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> but I can get him to do it for an hour. Or maybe he could recruit his friends. Sure. Misery loves company. Yeah. So get that. You know, just I'm mm. sure they can get community service hours for it. And do we have a speaking of that? Because I was just thinking, do we have a Boy Scout group or anything in town that might build the shadow boxes? You know, is there any no, organization that, that we know like that that would? Should be a scout troop. We Is do there? have a Boy Scout troop. I know we have Girl have Scouts. Yeah, I don't know. There is Girl Scouts. Oh, you know, we should, the Open Space Committee should talk to them. Yeah. I never thought of that. I'll talk to them. I mean, I'll do that since I'm, it's all about day in the park right now. You know, if, if we don't, if we can't get anything going with the school. Well, we'll have to figure out how I find out where the Boy Scout troops are and who's the... Who's the boss of them? Mm -hmm. Who's the scout leader? Uh, Vicki Smith. She in does. In charge of the Girl Scouts. Right? Yeah, the Girl Scouts. The so she might know who Scouts. leads the Boy Scouts. Yeah. Um, I don't have her number. Probably on the internet. Isn't you know what? The Girl Scouts true. do it. Let them play with power tools. That's true. Girl power. Girl power. 
No um, one is safe in Brisbane from the Open Space Committee. <laughs> we will come for you. Um, I was just trying to think of something that was like a pre-made plastic storage box that had a clear lid that we could repurpose without having to get quite so crazy and how many intensive. Yeah, well, we need to kind of have a meeting to discuss yeah. how many, because we have that one picture. But I still stand there and I go, okay, here's the box, and I'm going to pull the plastic out and put that. Can that even be recycled? If there's not a little recycle sign on it, does that have to get thrown away? How can we make plastic go away? <laughs> See those whales in Germany? Yeah. Sperm whales swallowing plastic and died mm -hmm. in Germany last week, this week? Mm -hmm. It's disgusting. Yeah. Anyway, um, so, all right. Um, that, I think that's good for Day in the Park. Do we want to have a meeting, Natalie? You and myself and Kima? Sure, that'd be great. Okay, um, do you want to send out an email for us and um, see what days work for Kima? Sure, and if only one of you can meet, that would be we'll fine, fine, so we can start we'll make working. It happen. Okay, yeah. that sounds good. I'm available all next week. Oh, great. But we could do something next week. Any day works mm -hmm. for me. Sounds good. Okay. At least at this point right now, this minute. Okay. Um, yep, I'll have the toolkit ready. Yep, I knew you I would. Need to s pro I, even before next meeting, I need to start sending it out to you guys because my idea is to send it through each person in the committee successively in order to sign off and make any edits because if I, you know, I'm ever so slightly dyslexic and if I read something, that thing again, I'm, and I find 20 more <laughs> typos, I'm going to pull my hair out mm -hmm. at some point. So I need some help. Um, so yeah, I need to finish that up really quick so that it can, so that everybody can have some time to look at it and sign off on it. Yeah. How does your week look next week? Do you want to get together and read through it together? Or just? No, I'll just send it to you. Right. You can be first. All right. It looks like there is a, a Boy Scout troop, but it's not real clear who's the troop leader. Okay. I don't think the Brisbane Boy Scouts are really active, but I could be mistaken. It's Troop 134, apparently. Mm -hmm. Did anybody yeah. think about um, tap plastics? They say they, you know, they can cut sheet plastic in the, on their website or their Yelp. It says uh, laser cutters, engravers, CNC router. Our skilled fabricators can build everything from display cases to literature holders. So yeah. Will you send us that link? Yeah. Yeah, they do stuff. I think they're a little expensive. They which might, is, yeah. But we only need that much times maybe two, right? Maybe three? Yeah. Two? Maybe three since there's three different bins? Yeah. I think they should be larger because I think when you start putting samples of stuff in, it's going to take up. But you're only going to put a piece of the sample. I'm going to put the whole, That's you know. Yeah. Okay. We'll figure it out. Um, but that'd be great. Yeah, tap plastics. I think that'd be good. At least it's a good place to start if we need it. Yeah. The other thing I could call the Jericho Project too. Oh, yeah. Those guys might want to do something. Natalie said you could use Saran wrap. Just. That's true. You could it. just for the deal. I oh, mean, right. what do we really need to spend that much money for? It's really just to show them. It's not. We're not going to keep it, really, would we? Uh, we were originally talking mm -hmm. about something we could keep. Oh, we were. I mean, that's right. Were we going to put it in the city hall somewhere for people to come in and be able to see? I mean, we could do that as kind of a display and make it a little nicer. Hmm. Yeah. I don't think it, if we've got a couple hundred dollars, we should be fine. We'll see when we meet at what we have and what budgets and what's going to cost from that meeting yeah. next week, okay? Well, I think we're ready to move on. CAP subcommittee updates? <coughs> So you have to remind me about your question, Barbara. Um, was it about the toolkit? Yeah, find the tools. Okay. Right. I, mm -hmm. I went through and found a uh, cost for everything and how much it would cost the city. And so. Uh, yeah, I've already, I, I, already, I already had gone through that, too, and sent you prices off of everything off of ACE. Mm -hmm. so, so were you able to confirm those? Yes, and so Karen and I will have to talk with staff and then um, get next step, next steps to buying tools. Okay, you, there's not that much that needs to buy because I've donated most of it. Um, right, the kilowatt, and then what else? What else? What? 
What else were you donating besides the kilowatt? I've got, oh, I don't even know if I brought the toolbox. <laughs> okay, I'll just, maybe. But we'll I think just... the main thing that needs to be bought is the, the thermometer, infrared. There's the freezer thermometer and the infrared thermometer, so just a couple things, if I remember correctly. What about the fart smeller? Oh, yeah, I haven't pursued the, the fart wand. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, I don't. I don't think that would go in the toolkit anyway. But it's more of my methane detecting project. <laughs> different, different obsession. What else? Are we ready to move on to staff updates? I just, I just wanted to make a, a climate action plan suggestion, and that is, um, I just watched the series The Years of Living Dangerously and I was very impressed with it and I'm wondering what people think. Do you think it would be worth it to try to arrange a community showing at least of some of it and discussion afterwards and what would be involved in that? I think it would be fabulous. Um, I don't know what's involved though because a lot of those things if you do showings there's little like licensing. I know we've tried to go down this road in the past and got stymied. Um, I don't think we have trying to show a movie, do you? I think we have. I don't remember it. Okay. C could we maybe see if that would be possible? Sure. Maybe do it, I don't know, maybe at the community center in the library? Would we have to, do we have to rent that? Right, that's just through park and rec, so that shouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. I don't know, what do people think? Yeah, I watched that series too, and I, I was really good. I mean, I wasn't blown away by it, but it was good, and it was definitely not something. I think it's definitely enough information. Maybe not showing all of it. it it's pretty long by the time you get through. Yeah, it's it's like eight or nine episodes all together, mm -hmm. but sort of as a vehicle to start conversation, I guess. Yeah, was and some of the episodes did get a little rep repetitive. Um, so I think it, we could do, yeah, if we can get the licensing, I would totally be behind that. I think that would be awesome. Part of the reason I want to do something like that is that, you know, we talk about, we talk about climate change in, you know, what we can do, or what we think we can do in our city, and we talk about adaptation, but this is a huge international justice problem. I don't think people quite realize how bad it already is for a lot of people in the world, like in Bangladesh. And so it seems to me, you know, we need some consciousness raising around that. Absolutely. And I, I felt like the, the episode that showed Bangladesh, the two episodes that showed Bangladesh were really powerful. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, the people need to be made aware of that, that what we emit here is really screwing, screwing people's lives up elsewhere. Yeah, absolutely. So would I guess the first step was would be to have staff just look up the see what their licensing conditions are. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's if anything's public viewing, charged or not is often taboo, but they you know, they may be on they may have a more generous end use agreement since they are trying to accomplish something. Well, the first, the first episode, at least for a while, was, was available online for free, and the first episode was also pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, and I've also heard that there, there's going to be a second season of that this oh, year. Wow. So, so maybe, you know, that way all we need is a TV with, with that cable channel, mm -hmm. and we could have watching, you know, watching parties or something. Yeah. Yeah, but but where would we get the TV and the cable channel? We have it here. Yeah, it's supposed to, I think it's on National Geographic. Um, Showtime isn't, what I think I read was that Showtime isn't going to do it. They've handed the whole thing over to the National Geographic channel. But I don't know what the broadcast schedule is. Oh. Okay. Something to check into, I guess. Yeah. And there was something else I was going to say about CAP, and it just escaped me. So <laughs> it can't be that important. No, it's coming. Yeah, go ahead and tell us about 
I'm sorry, you had a question. No. No, no I, I had something else I was going to say, and I just forgot what it was, so it can't be that important. Or else maybe I'll remember it before the next CAP meeting. Okay. About that, yeah. So to, just confirming tomorrow, is it, are we canceled? Yeah, I guess. I would sure prefer to. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I'll send out an, an email to reschedule. Th Thursday afternoon is still okay. It's just mm -hmm. maybe not that Thursday afternoon. Okay. You had some, staff had some stuff they were having a hard time getting done or? What is, well, we know that on the um, energy conservation stuff, we want to talk to the liaison, so we're getting that set up. We're going to have a quick introduction with them, and then we hope to have them at next month's meeting. <coughs> and so that's kind of, you know, we came up with the outline at the last meeting of what we kind of wanted to see, get their take on. And we just, we haven't done much either on the training. Okay. That's yeah, I need. I know. I need to work on that, and I'm, I'll get started on it before we meet again. Yeah. So we wanted to have something for you. If we met. Okay. Guess I want to do textile, or should I do anything? Here? Are we ready for staff updates oh, now? Yeah. Uh, so, Karen and I met with the general manager from Recology, and it was just more of an informational meeting, and um, they talked about what they are beginning to do and um, in San Francisco for textile recycling, and we talked about potentially something that could be done in Brisbane. Um, so we're going to have a second meeting with the zero waste specialist from Recology, and that's tomorrow, so... Wouldn't it be South San Francisco scavenger, though? Because we're not under contract with Recology. Yeah, so to clarify, I think Michelle had said, oh, see what Recology is doing. And yeah. Natalie reached out to them, and they've done, like, three different pilot programs in San Francisco where they um, picked up textiles with their bulky item pickup for free. And then they at uh, Multifamily, they had some containers that people could put textiles in, and then they did a maybe a couple times a year individual. No, they, they actually started collecting it at some point with, in their recycle bin. It's all combined in San Francisco because they have a sorter, but I guess the textiles really jammed up their sorting. So they told us they're upgrading um, what their sorter for recycling so it can handle textiles. And they also, they're gonna give us more information, but when they did, um, the pickup that way and with bulky item they got a big turnout in the beginning and then it kind of slowed down it's like everyone cleaned out their closets for the first period of time I don't remember what it was and then it kind of slowed down but <coughs> the the idea the concept we were talking about is that if we had some kind of pickup that if we got it into their zone which is tunnel and includes our courtyard then they could process it with the facilities they have to process it Whereas at this point, South San Francisco Scavenger doesn't have any way to process it, so it'd be a matter of probably taking it to one of the smart facilities. Mm -hmm. So it's not, we're not the people that work, the staff that work with the franchise agreement, and so we weren't really coming from the angle of like, we're asking you to provide the service. It was just like, what might conceptually be possible? So. Did they say what they did with the stuff they collected? I mean, did they sort it out into usable and not usable, I mean. Yeah. Well, no, I think they're picking up the stuff that's, I don't remember their webpage that well, but I thought they were picking up the stuff that was non-usable. I remember them t talking about how materials back then used to be mainly cotton and wool, and those were able to be reused and remanufactured into, you know, other items. But now, you know, synthetic materials and fibers aren't really Right. very reusable um, so I know they're partnering with some other uh, company and then this company makes uh, a few select items out of recycled materials which okay. were like the insulation okay. and the stuffing so, so what they were telling people is don't put usable clothing in the recycling they were telling them put your really worn out stuff in the recycling I was just curious it's what sort of stuff they were picking up so, yeah, I'm, I don't remember exactly, but that's a good question. We will ask them is, 
were they doing it for separation or uh, their, I think their process was for the stuff that was not reusable, but I don't know if they were doing that initial separation or they were asking people to, that's. I, I'm just guessing that a lot of people are pretty lazy about it and if you tell them, yeah. put your textiles in the recycling bin, you know, that a lot of perfectly good stuff yeah. will, will go into the recycling yeah. bin and not get reused, which is, is actually not a good. Right, and that could be a problem for us if we did a, when we tried to do like a quarterly yeah, yeah um, I had asked you guys last time, I think, to talk to SMART a little bit more, too, and see, A, where their locations were, and, and B, are they interested in having a location on this side of the peninsula? Because I think you said they were Oakland and Richmond. Um, San Francisco seems like it would be a SMART idea for them, but Brisbane's almost San Francisco. <laughs> Wait, no, we haven't followed up with them yet. Okay. So you don't know where their existing facilities are? No, I Other I than they're in Oakland and Richmond? Yeah. But like not as address? Uh, it's on their website. I couldn't find it. No. I beat my head up against that no. website for, <laughs> for days. But you did see the reference to Oakland and Richmond. No, you guys told me that. Oh, that's interesting. We both saw it. I must be on the wrong page or something because I tried using their finder thing and it just kept taking me back to the home page. You drove me mad. Yeah, that could be something we, we can look into. There's still We're still definitely investigating and giving information at this point. Yeah, because you know? that was one of the things I liked about SMART is that because it addressed Glenn's issues, they really did separate stuff. And then the, the raggy mixed fibers with the polyester, they ground up, and that went into stuffing and carpet backing, and they took care of all that. Go on, Glenn. I just remembered what I was going to say under the Climate Action Plan. <laughs> Yay! Victory! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I do want to bring this up because I've now heard about it from two people. Um, so we know at least two people who aren't on this committee are reading the climate facts. And you've, I guess you're writing those now, Natalie? Thank you. I haven't had time. I've been meaning to send you some more, but you're doing a good job. But what both of these people have said to me is they really like the climate facts, but they, <laughs> they prefer something shorter. And one person preferred something with action items. I have really mixed feelings about that, but because I envisioned the, the climate facts as partly education, not just what you can do. Um, there's, there are a lot of misconceptions, a lot of things people don't know, you know, that, that methane is a bigger greenhouse gas or, or more potent greenhouse gas than CO2, for instance. But I don't know, if people aren't going to read the, you know, the paragraph long things, maybe we should try to abbreviate them somewhat. What do people think? Have, have you, do, do you guys know of anybody that's actually reading them? No. I mean, besides us. Do you? You've, you've had people that are, I've, I'm I've talked to two people that are reading them that aren't on this committee. Well, I mean, I like the action step idea. I don't know how many people are going to do anything. They read them. Yeah, nobody <laughs> like did. runs up to me on the street and was like, I love that climate action <laughs> act. I totally read it. Not happening. That doesn't mean they didn't doesn't read it. doesn't mean they it. don't read it. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I think if people want action steps, they can ask. I mean. Yeah, the last few I have, we'll see. Um, I pulled from the climate action plan um, the, ten, the list of 10 items that you can do to reduce your carbon footprint. So those specific yeah. ones are a little bit more mm -hmm. action-oriented. And then, you know, I did talk about going to the farmer's market and things like that. Um, but making it shorter is kind of hard because I feel like... It's really hard. It, leads, it needs a very small amount of at least background information yeah. or else mm -hmm. it's just kind of, a, you know, I don't not, know. It's not hitting the nail. You're not telling the story. Right. Yeah, I, th I think, I don't know, I think the story does need to be told at yeah. least, you know, and, and even a couple sentences or a paragraph is not telling a whole heck of a lot. Yeah. This is, you know, it's reasonably complicated. It's not that long. I mean, so that's what you can, you can keep doing whatever everybody wants, but I think we do what we feel is best and move on. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I did, I did tell one person that I would bring this up at the committee and I'll tell her that we discussed it and decided to continue this way, at least for now. And when we have the ability to add action steps to it, we do. 
like yeah. you did with this last one. Yeah, and if I could make it a little shorter, yeah. I'll try. Okay, <laughs> thank you. It's hard though, I, I know. Anyway, sorry to interrupt the sequence. Textile, are we done with that? I think we beat it up. So the, the last restoration day was uh, on the 23rd last month, and there were about 13 volunteers, and it took place at Sierra Point Canyon. And it was basically focused on um, IV removal and especially uh, removing IV f that were wrapping around trees. Um, so I think Go they ahead. cleared out quite a bit for the small amount of turnout. We, they pretty much filled the entire bin, so it was pretty good. Um, Skipping ahead a little bit to Lagoon Cleanup Day is on the 17th next month. Uh, meeting spot will be at Fisherman's Pier along Sierra Point, and the closest cross road is Lagoon, and it starts at 9. One more thing about Restoration um, restoration Day. I was um, working with the Jericho Project to move some big items for me, needed big guys, and I told them about Restoration Day, and they're like, tell us when, can we come, can we do it seriously? I mean, they were so excited about it. Wow. All those Jericho guys are like. Wow, that's great. Yeah. So I wanted to share with you that they're like, when? Tell us all the dates you have. We want to do this. Lagoon Cleanup Day is the last event for this year. I know. I told them I think most of them were done this year, but they're mm -hmm. like, we're here next year. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's tons of trash to pick up along Lagoon Road. I don't no. know if they want to pick up trash. Absolutely. They love this. This is what their whole thing is about your spirituality. Yeah, I mean, do we send like a poster to the P the HR department of each company in Brisbane so that no companies that have expressed interest to me in the past, I keep their contact and uh, I uh, contact mm -hmm. them again the next year. Because I talked to the Doubletree, too, because I books, just booked some rooms there for a client of mine. Mm -hmm. and, um, she, and I told the salesperson about it, and I told the director of sales. Yeah, I can ask the chamber. They do an e-newsletter. I can ask them to put a, out a, a blast about it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. That better be good. Get those numbers back up like they were. If we don't do it this year, the 17th, but I'm thinking next year. Those guys were really, were, they were really sweet about it. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be easy enough to get yep. them get them the information. So um, the San Mateo County Parks meeting um, is um, held with the county. Uh, Ramona, that she came here to speak to you guys once before, holds these meetings, and it's basically getting together staff from the city and um, other organizations that work on San Bruno Mountain, such as San Bruno Mountain Watch. And it's just kind of an informational meeting and to keep everybody updated on what's happening on the mountain. Um, so I went to that meeting on the 3rd. Um, so just briefly go over what was discussed. Um, we talked about butterfly and larvae, larva counts, um, forest fuel management, vegetation management budget, um, some interesting points from that. Uh, the, they did have budget for a grazing trial and uh, replanting projects. Ooh. So are they going to do a grazing trial? They have budget for it, yeah. So they, I'm, I'm assuming they'll uh, implement that this fiscal year. What are they going to use, goats? I, they didn't say specifically. They just told us the dollar amount and then that they were going to do a grazing trial. So oh, wow. Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah, it's great. Goats don't graze, they browse. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good fact. Whichever. <laughs> Sounds like a climate fact in the making. I have one more thing. Dead trees. Oh, yeah. Brisbane Elementary. Um, they have a sort of perimeter of Monterey Pines, many of which are dying. And I assume that I, I should what's just that? Let, you, let you know. I thought I saw some work going on there the other day, like recently. Maybe just getting rid of some of the down stuff or something. And that one along the apartment building on San Bruno that I was going to um, email you the address for, I walked by to get a picture and it was gone, so I didn't email you the address. Good. And we've got our own in Quarry Park. I think we need to um, 
Yeah, it's too oh, bad. Actually, I think I think I'm sorry. I think that the maintenance person responsible was going to have the arborist have an arborist look at it and see if it needed to come down now, or if it could. Well, it's right by the picnic table. Okay. I don't know if you guys heard about it, but some somebody was walking through a park in San Francisco this week, and a hundred pound branch fell off a tree, and she's in the hospital. <gasps> Jeez, and, and, and this damage. was a tree that wasn't obviously dead. In fact, they, they said they just recently looked at it. So the, the tree on Quail Road Park is very dead. Yeah. So and the, and the one next to it, unfortunately, is getting sick. Yeah. So, so that's potentially a liability issue. Yeah. yeah. I, want that. yeah. yeah I, so I wrote to the um, public works about that. That that woman has has like serious brain damage issues. She's in bad shape. Terrible. Yeah. Poor thing. Yeah. Uh, so I have two other updates about workshops. So we are hosting a Peninsula Clean Energy workshop here on the 29th at 6 p.m. in this room. And the second workshop, um, it's about sun shares, and that'll be in this room on the 31st at 5:30. Five thirty is kind of early. You think people are going to be able to make that? Um, so that one, I believe, is on a Wednesday night, and so we do have a second workshop um, on October eighth, and I believe that's on a Saturday. Okay. So you said August thirty first, five thirty, right? Yes. Okay. Or the twenty ninth. Was it also five thirty? On the 29th for the PCE workshop, it's at 6 p.m. Do you think, speaking of workshops, that there would be any point on having a workshop on PACE financing for people? At the Peninsula Sun Shares, um, we will have staff from the county talk about their home energy upgrade program. Oh, okay. Um, mo most likely at the end of the meeting. Uh, and they'll this, talk about it then. Yeah, this okay. this meeting on the thirty first. Um, we we are um, there's another meeting in in this room after that workshop, and so it won't be as long. Um, but the following on October eighth, when they'll come again and talk about home energy upgrade, and I think you know it's a, a Saturday, so you know they should be allowed more time to talk about it in detail. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Adjournment. <coughs> Make a motion to adjourn. Or do we need to set next meeting first? We have it's the twenty first. Yeah, it's the twenty first unless there's any problems. I don't have a problem Is with that. Is that a I Wednesday? Yeah, it's a Wednesday, the twenty fifth or six thirty in the same place, same station. Okay. Okay. We're good. Can I get a motion? Who's going to motion? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nice. Wow, it's a record. It's a record. I Kima would be clock. so proud. He'd be very proud of you. <laughs> Where are we with our Lipman letter?